Welcome to this level 24 episode of Voodoo Warlock 2023. Since the last episode, I did web flagging chain three. Zonder level can do that as high as 27, but I knew I was going to want the favor. Working towards getting that uh, big 500 PDK favor. Getting there. And plus two save versus evil creatures when I get there. Again, that's something I wouldn't work towards during a normal life, but because this is a final life, I'm going to want to get every last one of those, you know, saves and hit points and skills bonuses that I can. There's nothing to do, you know, at this level that's like max 24. You know, the base 20s are max 23s. The base 21s are max 25. So I decided I was going to do a gibberish run for this episode. It's a very important piece of gear, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Next level, I'm going to be working on 21s. I'm going to be doing all the uh, keep on the Borderlands quest for Gatekeeper's favor. And then a couple in the 12. Like another man's treasure. Kind of a big deal to get that 12 favor. I think I did, I did a couple gibberish runs as well. And that's about all I've done since the last episode. Gear hasn't changed at all. Still using the same stuff as I was last episode. Destiny. Got a few more points. Got plus three to evocation DCs there. That's going to help my pack damage. And the saves against, like, Arcane Tempest. And I got 10 points, or an additional 5 points of PRR here. I think I had 1 point spent here last episode. Nothing changes on Reaver points. Of course, picked up Constitution. It's Constitution the whole way. Is there another feat? At 24, yes. I picked up Greater Shield Mastery. It's like under combat styles or something. I had a hard time finding it on the feat list when I leveled up. I don't even know where... Oh, here it is, Combat Styles. Yeah, Greater Shield Mastery. Give me some additional PRR. Well, it says it improves hit points of heroic durability. They all do. Be nice if it was uh, a little more descriptive. This is, I believe, a new change. They just made some changes with Update 57. You know, they got rid of Epic Defensive Fighting. That wasn't something I used for this build anyways. So there's not really any change there, but improves the hit points of Heroic Durability. All right, I had to look it up in the release notes from update 57, so I'll just read it. It says, Heroic Durability has been updated to provide plus 30 hit points. In addition, and this is where it pertains to, to the Shield Mastery feats, for every melee combat style feat you take, up to four, you gain a 25% bonus to the hit points gained from your class levels. Epic and Legendary levels count as half value. Bonus can only stack up to 100%. Sweet! Means we're going to end up with some more hit points. I like hit points. I always find that when I run out of them, I die. And when I'm dead, it's difficult for me to tank. So more hit points is good. Show where the character sheet is. Oh, you know what else I did? It was... Uh, 
I did R1 against the Demon Queen. No problem. I was on uh, doing my city Saturday. I did my Saturday show on DDO stream as DDO's official Twitch channel. Every Saturday I'm there. AM to 3 p.m. Eastern. But then I did try to do the R1 Demon Queen raid. And that proved to be a little too much. Um, I was getting hit a lot harder than I thought. I was just trying to solo it. And uh, I was having to heal myself a lot. And I ended up getting her down to about half health. And I'd used up all my resources. My mana was all gone. I used up all my mana clickies. And I was like, you know what? I mean, if, if I wanted to keep going, I would have had to start drinking pots. And I said, forget it. So I just detoured out and just redid it on Elite. Soloed it on Elite, but that even took... It was a little bit slower than I thought it was going to be. But I'm only level 24. You know that one you can do as high as level 26 for maximum XP across the board. And I know from previous experience when I'm a little bit higher level, you know, it'll be no, you know, that will go a lot smoother. But at least I got it done on Elite. So, Curse Blade Jack Jibbers is one of the most important items in the game. I'm sure I spoke about it earlier in the series, but I made those videos so many months ago. <laughs> You know, I can't remember everything that I said, but I must have talked about this probably in the first episode. It's a level one clicky. And it's the only item in the game that allows you to self-raise. But it's, uh, it's kind of a peculiar item in that it raises you as a wraith and you're rotting to death over the next 60 seconds. But the point is, you know, if you're with a group and you have like a party wipe, 60 seconds is plenty of time to throw some ray scrolls, get other people up. Or if you're soloing, 60 seconds probably gonna be enough time for you to run back to a shrine. And if you're in a raid, it's the only item in the game that allows you to self raise in a raid. Res cakes cannot be used in raids. A good angle to fight a reaper. So awesome, awesome item. And you're going to want to start farming this. You know, I thought, you know, th this, so this is base level 25. So you do as high as 29 on reaper for max XP across the board. But I thought I'd do it early, because I'm at a kind of a strange level anyways. And just to emphasize, you want to start running this and including it in part of your epic leveling routine as early as possible, because of the importance of having a Cursed Blade of Jack Jibbers on every tune that you care about. It's found a character. It's a very rare drop. I've farmed this endlessly. It's been a campaign in my guild ever since this item came out to try to get as many guildies to have this on as many alts as possible. So, I mean, I, I've had to have done this quest thousands of times, literally, over the years. My best guess is it has something like a 1% drop rate. I've pulled it on the live stream many times, but it is a pretty rare drop. And, you know, sometimes just people get bad luck and they've farmed it hundreds of times and, and haven't pulled it. But... Just in case you fall into that category or you start getting frustrated because you're not pulling it. Here's what I can guarantee when it comes to the Cursed Blade of Jack Jibbers. I can guarantee you that you will never get one if you don't run this quest. Ooh, a little lag there. You have to run this quest to get it. So, you know, this is really, this is pretty easy quest, pretty fast. It's a uh, you know, decent XP per minute handful of collectibles along the way a couple epic level named items that are common drops from the end chest so you know that's sentient weapon food and a chance to get the cursed blade of jack jibber so every reason to run it and absolutely should part be part of your epic leveling routine the sooner you can run it the better i'll run it at rate of level 20 but you know, if you're like a first life or something, that might be a little tricky for you, to, especially if you're soloing. If you're in a group, it shouldn't be a big deal. Now, if you are soloing this and these 
vampires are giving you a hard time because they'll dance you and stuff, or you know, if it's taking too long to beat them down, or they just keep dancing you, just run by them. You do not have to fight them. They are optionals. But if it doesn't take you too long to beat them down, go ahead and do it. If you need epic XP anyways, because it's they're worth like it's like 13,000 XP or something if you kill all the vampires. This is the only quest I'm going to do for this episode, so it's a quickie kind of compared to the rest, most of the rest of the episodes. Maybe I'll do the ones in the 12. The next one. I don't even know. I, I might not even have videos for those other than the first look. I don't do those quests a lot. They're definitely not part of my regular routine. Although one of them does drop an item that, you know, might be interesting to use during epic leveling for this build, which is the, it's a, I can't remember, some kind of cloak that gives, has like a platinum trans, transmutation guard or something like that. Basically mobs that hit you have a chance to turn to platinum, which is pretty cool. Cool guard. It's not one that I've used on this build, but you know, you could use it. For epic leveling, you wouldn't want to use it at endgame. And there's another collectible over here. Some stat damage there, con damage, so I just threw myself a heal scroll to heal the con damage. Get that valve, come up here. That chest is locked. I don't have any way without using a bell of opening to open it, so we're just going to run by it. The reapers in this dungeon. And just like any item that you know, that you need to farm out for a character. I, I don't, you know, don't farm it until you hate life. That's just going to ruin the game for you if you sit there and farm something over and over and over and over. You know, just a, a gibbers a day keeps the ransack away, right? Camp chest... the fourth and final vampire. slow going for me to beat down the boss solo this level but it's all right if it takes a couple minutes it's all right Easy to get ransacked. Most of the breakables are in clusters, big clusters. Buy that group and just drag them down to this group. And then drag this group into the next group. Because remember, we can kill 50 mobs in the same amount of time as it takes us to kill one mob. 
drag them all together in a pile, and blow them up. Range the lever there. And there opens up DDO's dunk tank. Valve in the ceiling. You should already have Ransack at this point, but just in case you don't, a last group of breakables, and then the boss. You know, if Jibbers is giving you a hard time, you know, when you need a, a way to get away, you can always jump up here, just grab the ledge, and be safe up here. He does, you know, insta kills. He's also going to do flesh to stone. Definitely should have death lock on your gear set at this point. Uh, but we also have the death ward spell, so no problem. But you know, just in case it gets, you know, it times out or gets dispelled or something, you want to have death lock as a backup. Very important. Well, the banshee he just threw. wanted to check in guild to see if anybody wanted a free pull because I don't need it and I'm not going to bother opening the chest since I already got one and I don't want to, you know, have that count against the looting. It's just taking me that much close to ransack, you know, I want to be able to pull it for others. So we'll just leave the chest as it is. So that's curse. That's a epic two two toed to bias that you're going to want to run, you know, probably daily until you get your gibber's blade. That does it for this episode. As always, if you have any questions, you can make a, uh, a post in my, my build post. You can uh, make a comment on this video, and you can always stop by the live stream. Always happy to answer viewer questions. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.